this video again will give you a little um, yeah, exercise about uh, how to implement structs into your program and we also get to know the tag dev keyword and how to use it in combination with structs but also with other kind of variables okay um, so first of all in the last video we saw how to use the struct um, in this video we will make a more intuitive use of it so we will learn uh, why we actually using structs uh, to improve the readability and the logic of our code so i will declare a struct called yeah maybe uh employee so this will give a list of our employees and uh, as in the last video I use the curlies and inside the curlies we are um, declaring some variables that describe our employees. The first one is they all have an employee number per, uh, for their personal account. Um, they all have a name just like in the last video and uh, they all have a salary. So this will basically uh, represent our employee list and uh, in the last video I told you we have a variable list that will come here but I didn't use it and this time I am going to use it uh, to show you the uh, intuitive way to remember how to de declare a struct. So the first is um, this is very much like the same like uh, this so we have a type and our type in this case is destruct and now imagine we need to uh, de define that type we need to tell how that type is working so that will be inside of the curlies and then we have a name which is a variable of that type and we can assign a value to uh, that variable and this is uh, just the same thing so we are going to assign uh, a value here and in the last video I told you okay we can initialize the values after we assign a variable of that type and uh, when we initialize a value here we need to um, keep the order so the first one would be the employee number the second one would be the employee name i just choose max here just some name and uh, the last one would be the salary and we can also have a list like when you think about okay we have integer a we can say okay integer a is one and we have another integer b and we are not going to initialize it this is the same thing so we have another um another variable that we are leaving uninitialized and now we are going to uh, to give some values to our uninitialized variable because we know uninitialized variables are uh, dangerous. Oh, str and copy. Uh, as you can see, I've used the string header file here, so we can make use of the um, str and copy function. And I want to give a value to the name and a salary okay oh ah talking and uh, writing is not good so that's better okay um don't get confused with this value here um so we can print that out employee one uh, is and gets a monthly salary of okay so employee one a name and employee one salary so we don't care about the number now because of course you know how to print that out you learned that in the last video okay uh, let's compile this so we can uh, see if everything is all right. 
and yes, it uh, prints out the right values. So um, yes, you can uh, see this very intuitively, just like I told you before, mm, with the you can compare always compare that to this expression so you know how to declare a struct you need first you need a type which is struct employee then you need to tell how that uh, is working and then you need to provide some names but this is optional and uh, the name actually is also optional we will see that now so let's um, declare another uh, variable of the type struct employee and you know that this is very annoying to always write struct employee and we will uh, get rid of this soon okay and the number is of course three the name is uh, i don't know and the salary is maybe a little bit higher he maybe has a higher position in our company so i will change that and print that out. Okay, you already know that this is working because uh, we learned that in the last video. What we are going to do now is um, we want to get rid of the struct. Instead, we want just write employee because uh, this will increase our readability again. Um, and we are going to do this by using the type def, like I already said, and I want to explain the type def to you before we are using it. So first of all, think about this. Maybe you come from another uh, language, from another programming language that you already know, and maybe they don't call the integer type int. Maybe they call that integer. And uh, maybe you don't like uh, the, the name int or for some reason, and you just want to rename it or whatever. So this is the way you, you would do that. Y you would... Uh, um, need the keyword type def and the keyword type def expects the type that um, you want to define and a name for that type. So the name actually is the integer and our type is int. And this uh, reminds us very much of uh, uninitialized variables. So we have int a maybe. And if we say type def int, type def int a, it would be the a new a type definition. Okay, how to use it? Well, now we can use the name integer like any uh, int type. We can just go ahead and say, okay, integer a equals three. And then we can just print that out like any other integer because it uh, behaves just like, um, like the type that we make the new definition from. So we can just provide a here and uh, compile this and run it and it will compile just fine. Okay, I will make a comment here. Okay, so now we want to use that type def on our struct. And uh, okay, I told you uh, we need the type def, we need the um, type and a name. So I will cut that here. Mm. And employee, we want, we want, we want something like that. Um. Okay. And now what we are going to do is um, we just write a type def here and we need to provide a name for that data type. That may be a little bit unintuitive, but think about it this, this way. You can read, uh, you can read this line of code here. Um, and before we said, Oh, we said this and uh, those two expressions are equal because we have the type def keyword. We have a type, actually, this is our type. You can see that here. This is our type. 
here is our type integer and we have a name for the newly created type definition and here we also have a name actually we took this one um, and we have another name for our newly created type definition um, so this is uh, the same actually here also um, you can really write that but I need to omit the type of here if we have a struct and we have a struct name employee and uh, so we can go ahead and say okay we have a new type that uh, is called employee uh, this is also working so as you can see it's working just fine and we are already using the new type here and we are um, on the same time we are using the struct here but of course we don't want to do this we want our code to look uh, uh, alike we don't want to have two different um, approaches for one type so I'm omitting that here um, okay but this looks very awkward and we can just use this now this is working equally well or not because I removed the type def here so this is working equally well and now we can even get rid of this name uh, I told you in the last video that this name is optional and uh, here you can see um, yeah one use of this uh, uh, of removing this optional uh, word okay so why is this working well actually because we have a type that type doesn't have a name but we don't care because we are creating a type definition and we our type definition has a name and we can use that name uh, later on in our code and this is all that we want to, to do we just want to use th that name and now we can work with the name employee uh, throughout all of our code and yeah this looks of course very nice and now we have um, the employee type and our employee has a number a name and a salary this is a logical unit of our employee um, type um, yeah which uh, looks a little bit cleaner than just to write uh, employee name or something in one variable we could of course say employee one number but this looks really awkward so instead we are going to use um, structs and uh, they provide us a logical uh, unit for uh, implementing different data types into one uh, structure and accessing the different data types uh, like this yeah so I hope you liked that video and that what video was any helpful to you um, yeah if it was helpful to you just leave a comment and if it wasn't helpful to you also leave a comment and tell me uh, uh, maybe something that this video didn't cover and you are still uh, need some explanation for maybe some topic just write that into the comment section I would be very happy and uh, see you in the next video bye